Hello and welcome to the next video on system software. Today we're going to be looking at device drivers and utility software. So a reminder, a device driver enables the operating system to control and communicate with peripheral devices. So that can include internal devices, your hard disk, your RAM, your graphics card, sound card, etc. And external devices, printers, monitors, mouse, keyboard, etc. There are thousands of device drivers pre-installed with modern operating systems. And the right ones for that particular computer setup uh, are loaded on boot up. So I think I read somewhere that in a modern version of Microsoft Windows, about half of the code is in fact just device drivers to support all those different peripherals that have been released over the last few decades. The exact details of which device driver is needed by the operating system is kept in a file. So in Windows, this is called the registry. And in Linux, you will have a number of different configuration files, for example. The makers of printers, graphics, tablets, scanners, all the other types of devices will normally provide device drivers for each make of operating system. And that's because the device driver for Windows uh, needs to be different for the device driver for Linux. So this is why if you, for example, remove Windows from your computer and reinstall a form of Linux like Ubuntu or Mint, you will need to make sure that you have all the different correct device drivers available for each part of hardware. So I've done that myself. I've installed a version of Linux just to find out that my graphics card doesn't have a compatible driver with Linux, so it doesn't work properly. So that can be a problem, making sure you've got the right device driver for the operating system that you need. So utilities. A utility is a relatively small program that has one purpose, usually concerned with the maintenance of the system. Usually, well, very broadly, there are two different types of utility software uh, built in. So these are all the utilities that come with your operating system. So for example, if you're using a Windows system, it comes with Disk Cleanup, Windows Explorer, Disk Defragmenter, etc. You've also got various standalone utilities that you can download from third party companies. So in a good example of that would be something like WinZip. So originally WinZip did not come with Windows. You would have to download a trial, quote unquote, edition, and then use that to compress and uncompress all your files and all the programs that you needed to use WinZip with. Nowadays, it is just built into Windows because it's so convenient. But another example of a standalone would be your various antivirus programs you get. So, for example, Norton or McAfee or Kaspersky, etc. So let's look at some common examples of software utilities. So in your exam, you might be asked to describe a few of these or list a few that might be applicable to a certain situation. So antivirus is a good example of a utility program. So something that we should already know, viruses are malicious programs, often designed to harm a computer system in some ways and spread and infect other systems. Antivirus software detects, removes, and prevents viruses and other malware from getting into the system and causing problems. Disk defragmentation. So this is about your hard disk drive and keeping it healthy. Over time, lots of files can be split up into multiple sections and spread out over a hard disk. This means the computer has trouble finding and reading each part of the file and slows the system down. A disk defragmentation program groups all the parts of a file together so they can be read in one go. It also puts all the free space on your hard drive together so it's more convenient to install the next program. So again, we've got some examples here. We've got the idea that we are defragmenting our hard drive and we're trying to put all the related files together, all the related free space together. And then we've got an example here of basically how your disk becomes fragmented. When you first start reusing your hard disk drive, you can just have all the files in a row like this, file A, file B, file C, file D. But over time, you're gonna start deleting and removing files and data and programs. 
And then when you have to reinstall new data, you get the situation where it's spread out over two different sections. Remember that your hard drive has a physical mechanism, a read-write head, so it has to spin the disk and move the read-write head here to read part of the file and then here to read the rest of it. And that slows it down rather than having it in one continuous section. So if you use a disk defragmenter, it'll try and put all of E together into one section and then put all your free space together at the end. And that just means your disk has to spin less, you have to move the read-write head less, and just speeds up the computer operations. Of course, disk, disk defragmentation is only for hard disk drives. It doesn't work on solid-state drives. Another type of utility you might want to describe is compression software. So compression programs reduce the amount of space taken up by a file. Why would we do this? Well, one, it saves disk space. Although that's not important nowadays with storage space being so cheap. However, what is important is it makes it faster to transmit over a network. So if you're sending um, or downloading video files or sound files, even images, they're almost always going to be compressed in some way. Often the compression algorithms make use of fact that patterns of data are regularly repeated. There's a lot more we could say about disk compression, but we will worry about that in another lesson. File managers slash file handlers. So we might almost forget about these because it's so obvious that we use these with our operating systems. And the purpose of these is to manage data storage. These allow files and directories to be moved, copied, deleted, and renamed, and manage the storage of software. So if you're using a Windows-based system, you'll be very familiar with Windows Explorer. Not to be confused with Internet Explorer, uh, the Windows Explorer allows you to look at all the files and folders and start your programs and rename everything. Obviously, if you're using an Apple system or a Linux system, you're going to be using a different type of file manager. Backup utilities are really important, especially for uh, businesses, big enterprises, because these allow backups to be automatically made of specified data. So you can make incremental backups, and that's just when the changes are saved from the previous backup. Or you can make full backups of everything every time you make a backup. You can store copies in a different location, different medium, in case the original is lost or corrupted. Uh, one important thing for this is cloud storage, because we can store it anywhere in the world. And the main thing is to ensure that important data is kept safe and can be restored in case there's a horrible disaster and we lose everything that we have. Okay, that's a very brief rundown. Uh, in the exam, you just need to be able to describe a few basic types of utility and maybe link it to the context. So if it's an accountancy company or another type of business, make sure you use context so that you are specifying how that particular business or that particular person would make use of the utilities. Okay, I will join you a little later for the next video. Good luck with your studies.